In the mid-20th century, Asawa's woven wire sculpture was received by the critics as quaint, feminine home decor. But by 2014, after her death, one of her pieces sold at auction for over $1.4 million. What changed? Ruth came onto the art scene in the mid-20th century as a Japanese-American woman in an art culture that was predominantly white and male. But instead of trying to fit in or conform, she quietly wove her strengths as a woman and her insight as an Asian-American into these incredibly powerful and relevant pieces of modern art. Her influences can be clearly seen in the forms of these sculptures. Rock piles and lines in the sand of Zen Buddhist gardens and Japanese lanterns are echoed in her shapes. The chain link fences and the confinement of her time in internment can also be seen in these pieces. Ruth believed that everything was interconnected. For her, producing art was connected to the past as well as the everyday tasks of the present. Her life was art, and art is life. When exploring sculpture at Black Mountain College, she wanted to bring the lines of her drawings into space. She did this by using one of her feminine skills of finger crocheting that she learned in the internment camps weaving camouflage nets, and later in Mexico weaving wire baskets, to carve out space with a single line of wire. Only one piece of wire is used in this sculpture, so that the piece is created from a continuous line connecting the entire form. The inside and the outside are one. The technique of weaving achieves a transparency in the artwork that highlights this connection. You can see the outside and the inside simultaneously. Because of this transparency, you can also see an exact replica of the pieces in the shadow they project showing the physical and the spiritual as one. In the right light, you could not tell which is the real piece and which is its shadow. This incredible way Asawa's sculptures play with light is one of the ways she brought something new to sculpting. In the 19th century, sculpture was made of rock and bronze, solid, heavy, grounded pieces. Another way Asawa reinvented sculpture was by hanging her art. She took a heavy, inorganic material, and by filling it with negative space and hanging it, she made it seem light. Critics at the time were not even sure they could call it sculpture because it didn't sit on the ground. The repetition of the stitch, as well as the shapes Asawa uses, also add to the illusion that these pieces are moving. Like the bubbles in a lava lamp, gently undulating as they rise. The muted colors she uses and balanced organic shapes emanate a calm energy. There is no hostility towards her internment or the obstacles of racism and sexism that she experienced expressed in these pieces, and they fully embrace her femininity. Asawa says that she believes we are an accumulation of our experiences and that she likes who she is so she does not harbor any resentment towards the things she endured in her life. This is the piece that sold for 1.4 million in 2014. Like the sculptures that seem to always be moving, this piece is an example of how Ruth is constantly transforming her art, always experimenting with her material. It was commissioned by a friend for a dance studio. Her early pieces are biomorphic, or look like organic shapes. This piece is anthropomorphic, or shaped like a human. Head, breasts, heart, womb, genitals, knees, and feet. A dancing woman for a dance studio. How is this all important? In the 1950s, the American art world was not ready to acknowledge Asawa's contributions. By the 21st century, Western culture had progressed to the point where the message and roots art were familiar and could be understood and embraced. 
Asian philosophy had fused with Western culture so much so that the word Zen had become a commonplace term, meaning calm and one with our surroundings. Also, the women's movement had come so far that the notion of feminine strength was no longer an oxymoron. From this future, we can also look back and see that Asawa was a consummate early modern artist. Modern art is defined by the experimentation with the interrelationship between materials, process, form, and light. Ruth repurposed inorganic, heavy, utilitarian metal wire and created light, organic, transparent forms that seemed to float. She also challenged the definition of sculpture by hanging her artwork and by using its transparency to cast shadows that mimic the original form. Her Eastern philosophies of continuity and process in art as in life resonate in these simple and beautiful forms. And she accomplished all this with a simple repetitive act of women's work, weaving, thus insisting that we acknowledge that craft and femininity do have a place in creating relevant art.